This video is something we've been wanting to do for a while now. It's been almost in the planning for about a year. And obviously, you know, from certain circumstances, that didn't happen. But all the places, all the pieces, all the things were in place, including all the tools, everything we need. Now, what are we talking about? Well, talking about this. So this is the Red Dragon Kuma K. 55.2. It's about $30. You can sometimes find it for $25 on Amazon. Really, really good keyboard for the price. Mechanical keyboard, hot swappable switches, red switches. So it's definitely worth the price. So we're going to mod this keyboard. And we're making something very interesting this time around. And it's been changed a few times of what it was going to become. And then the idea struck. So first we're going to start breaking this keyboard down, taking it completely apart piece by piece. Because first we got to get this thing apart, all the switches off it, everything taken apart, the USB cable taken out, everything. The first thing we did with this keyboard is I went and actually added a matte white paint over everything. So, cause the one thing, even though the, what this thing's gonna become, the original color of this device was kind of a matte white. It wasn't completely white, but you'll see. Then we got into little details of the coloring of the keyboard. Well, the shell, I should say, because all the little parts needed coloring too, including the back of the keyboard, needed a distinct feature that was iconic to what this keyboard was going to become or what it was going to represent. So the next part is, I was actually originally going to replace the switches on this keyboard, but I really, really like the red and black aesthetic of these switches, and they were actually fairly nice red linear switches. They actually are half decent. And, and obviously, we have to go through the tedious task of lubing every single one of these 87 switches. It's probably the least favorite thing I like about mechanical keyboards and modding keyboards, but the effort is worth it in the end. We gotta lube all these switches and we have to have certain tools to do that. So let's get on to lubing every single one of these switches. Now we're gonna use Crytox 205. It's my personal favorite lube for switches and stabilizers. So I've seen people use all kinds of different grades of Crytox, but 205 seems to be, I don't know, it's a sweet spot, I guess you could say. So as you can see, we went through and you're gonna see a nice little time lapse here of just every single one of these switches. And yeah, it took about, I think three and a half hours total. Now, we gotta move on to getting rid of that absolutely hideous USB 2.0 port like that's actually connected, wired right into the board. Do you really want that on your mechanical keyboard? No, I like a nice cable that you can disconnect. You know, you wanna disconnect it, throw it in your bag, take it wherever, that's how you want it. So we're gonna be using a breakout board for a USB-C cable and modding this keyboard so now it's USB-C compatible. And you can do this with most mechanical keyboards nowadays is if they don't come with a USB-C breakout. Well, USB, yeah, for you can plug into. And it's really, really easy. It's all you have to do is black is ground, red is power, obviously, or V, C, I can't remember, V bus, I think it's labeled on the actual breakout board. And then you got data plus, which is green, and data minus, which is the white cord. 
Really easy, super simple soldering. And then all we did is super glue this tiny little breakout board to the inside of the case. So the next thing we had to do was, it's a really, really simple mod, lubing stabilizers, but you also wanna mod your stabilizers. They have these little, little tiny feet and they're really, really easy to clip off. I just use fingernail clippers. I don't know, I find that easy. You can use little tiny clippers too, if that works. But fingernail clippers seem to work the best for me. I just, you always have fingernail clippers sitting around. So it's really easy. So you just take those little two tiny feet and these are remnants from really, really early days of MX switches. And they were supposed to, I guess say the bottom of the board or bottom of the actual case. I'm not sure exactly the technical details. I just know they're a remnant, but you can clip them off because that's what causes that terrible sound a lot. Hitting when you're hitting that space bar or hitting shift or hitting enter, but you can just clip those off, get rid of them. And the next we're gonna dip the rods into some crytox as well. Now you have to put everything back together. They're super simple. You just put that little piece back in the other one. Make sure the side with the two holes is facing where you're gonna put the rod through, put it through the bottom, clip it on, done. Now your stabilizers are completely lubed and we're ready to put them onto the plate. And now this is actually has, for a $30 keyboard, it has a metal plate. I am beyond impressed. The first thing we wanna do, we're gonna put everything together. Now, the one thing you want, you want something inside the case to kind of dampen the sound a little bit. Now, one thing, even though, so I was going to use the stuff from air conditioners you use to put on the side of air conditioners to kind of keep out the wind or keep out the air, or like an airtight seal. That actually works really well. I didn't have any right now. So I'm just using some bubble wrap because why not? Bubble wrap is great. I've used it multiple times in the past and it seems to work really well for me. So we're gonna add some bubble wrap. Then after adding some bubble wrap, which is nice and flat and flush, and there we go, it's good. Now we're gonna put everything together. We're gonna plug in the PCB into the USB, put that down, then put the plate on top of it with all the stabilizers in it. Make sure that's nice and secure. Make sure none of the sta uh, standoffs are impeded in any way. Everything's nice and flat and flush. It's good. Now, the tedious part, we gotta put all the switches back. Now we're gonna, do this in kind of a, I guess you could say, we have a method of doing this really, really fast. And I don't know how it works, but I find it to be magic. You just take the whole bag of switches after you put a couple in and dump them onto the PCB and boom, they're all on somehow. I don't know how it works, it just works. Try it. Next, we got some really, really nice PBT keycaps. These are kind of generic, they're generic brand technically. They're no, not any like GMK or anything, but they were fairly decent and they weren't exactly cheap either. But they aren't exactly like super high quality. They're kind of middle of the road, but they are beautiful. These like, these characters are super iconic to anybody who has ever grown up with an NES or just plays NES today. These characters are, you mean, immortalized now. And there's symbols from all gaming. This is a gamer's keycap set in general. It fits the aesthetic perfectly. So this keyboard just needs one more finishing touch to really complete this build, to really make it stand out from its original Red Dragon, I guess you could say, persona. Because now it is getting the original Nintendo logo. And as you can tell now, this is the NES keyboard.
Thank you for watching this video. This has been one of the funnest builds I think I've ever done. And it's probably going to be my daily driver keyboard. Uh, right now I have a steampunk one, which you actually saw the short of that we did the build of. This is so far one of the funnest builds I've ever done. I love getting this thing together. It took a while to really get everything together, to get the parts together, to plan the video. All these things take time, including waiting for keycaps to come in and Obviously, painting takes a while. Um, I had to paint outside, so I had to wait for weather conditions to be just right so I could do that. So there was a lot of factors and it took a little bit, but now it's finally done. And we have this video up here and we got to show this to the rest of you. We really hope you enjoyed it. Especially, I know there's some retro game enthusiasts out there that already are can't, that have a hint about this video and know it's coming. So I really got, hope you guys enjoy this video. I personally love it because Nintendo is a really, really big part of my past, as you saw in our previous video. If you haven't, the link is right over there. Go check out that previous video, especially if you're a fan of retro gaming. Go check it out. It's our origin story of where we started and where we first became gamers. So, and this keyboard really, really shows it is the gamer's keyboard. And I do have to say, yes, we are gamers. And this keyboard is a gamer's keyboard. For me anyway, it's my opinion. I love this keyboard, hope you do too. Hope you like the channel. Remember to hit subscribe, hit that bell, you get a notification when we put a new video out. And hey, we did our first premiere. We had a lot of people in the chat. Thank you for joining in the chat. We're gonna be doing that more. This video is probably going to premiere as well. And thank you all in the chat during this premiere if you are there. And we will see you on the next video. Hope you've enjoyed this Tech Prime Media keyboard build. And we will be back. Thank you for watching.